All right, in this lesson right here, what we're going to do is apply some of the things that I've shown you guys to some very basic modeling. Now, let me reiterate myself, very basic modeling. The idea of this VTM right here was to be an introduction into working with poly objects, okay? So I don't want to jump us into something really complex. I said at the very beginning of this VTM that in the next issue that's going to be released, we're going to be focusing on a very specific project that's going to be a little challenging for some of you guys out there. But again, the whole VTM will focus on that specific project on that specific model if you will so right now I just want to show you some real basic stuff that uh, puts everything to good use so let's start out by making I guess you could say the heart of a watch if you will I'm not going to be adding the numbers and all the you know the hand minute hand the hour hand etc I'm not going to be adding stuff like that I'm just going to give you a very basic idea how to go about starting a general shape and I decided to pick a watch it seems simple enough so what I want to do first is simply go over here and click on shapes and I'm going to come down here and activate my ingon tool and by default I've got six sides so that'll work now I'm going to want to drag it out in my top viewport and I'm going to want it to be centered so what I'm going to do is come up here to my snapping and we'll just simply right click to bring up my options box and I'm going to make sure that grid points is activated and it is so that's good so I'll go ahead and close that I'll turn on my snaps and I'll simply middle click over my top viewport to make it active place my mouse over the center click and drag out so that looks about good right there so I'll go ahead and right click to complete the ingon tool now I'll go ahead and switch over to my modifier panel now let's go ahead and convert this thing over into a poly object so I'm gonna right click come down to editable poly okay so you see convert to editable poly click so now we've got an editable poly so the first thing I'm going to do before I start doing any extrusions or anything else uh, is probably change this color. Ugh, that's not the world's most attractive color. Let's go with a darker gray. Okay, that looks pretty good right there. So the first thing I want to do is go ahead and cap this thing because right now it's considered an open poly. There's a big hole in the holes up here on the bottom side. And because of normals, we're seeing right through this thing. So to cap this, what I need to do first is select the border. So I'll go ahead and activate my border sub-object mode. I'll go ahead and open up my editable poly up here in the modifier stack as well so that you can see these different uh, sub-objects that I'm switching back and forth between. And now I'll just come down here and click on the border. Now you can see in the top front and my left view over here, you can see that the borders highlight it, but you don't see it down here in the perspective view. So, so that I can see it down here, what I'm going to do is go ahead and hit F4 for edged faces. So now we can see it both from this side and from the other side. So quite simple now to cap this. I'll just come down here to the edit borders rollout and click cap. Okay, so that's looking pretty good. Next thing I want to do is let's start out with getting a general shape. Let's do a little bit of an extrusion. So I'll go ahead and come over here and switch into polygon mode. And just so that I don't accidentally select the back side, I will check ignore back facing and then click. Just in case you don't see the polygon shaded red like it is right now, you may have to hit the F2 key. So of course hitting F2 will toggle between shaded off is just showing me what is selected with an outline. Basically all the edges will be outlined red. Or I can hit F2 again and then I see the actual polygon shaded like this, which works great for me. So the next thing I want to do is an extrusion. So coming down to Edit Polygons Rollout, I'll come down to Extrude. And of course, there's two ways I can go about doing this. You already know that. I can do it with direct manipulation, or I can do it interactively. So let's go for, how about some direct manipulation on this one? I'll go ahead and open up the Settings dialog box. And let's adjust our height a little bit. So, whoa, went the wrong way there. So we'll go with about that. And what I want to do is go ahead and turn on. Let's go ahead and move all the way down to the bottom here up under subdivision surface. Let's go ahead and turn on use NERM subdivision. And I'm going to take my iterations here and up them. Uh, that's good right there. And you'll notice since I've not committed my settings over here yet, I can still come in here and I can adjust this. So let's go to, I'm just kind of determining a thickness. It's the base thickness, if you will. Let's go right about there. So I'll go ahead and tell it OK. And since I don't have a lot of edges going across right here, uh, the way that I see I didn't mean to do that. Let's go down here. The way that this thing is being subdivided right now is going to make it very thin, very pill-like. So what I need to do is go ahead and come up here to the top and start adding a little bit more detail. And you'll see that that's going to give us some thickness here to the sides of it. But it's also going to keep it pretty well rounded. So coming back up here, 
Let's go ahead and cruise back on up to the top here. Okay. Let's go ahead and pick on a, let's see, do we want to do a bevel? Let's see, we could probably go in there and do a little bit of a bevel. Uh, now let's go ahead and pick on inset. That sounds good. So I'm just going to click right here, and I'm going to inset this in. Okay, so it's keeping everything rounded. If you look up in the front view right now, you'll see that it's staying pretty well rounded. And I'm going to go to about right there is good enough. Okay, so you can still see it rounds like such. But now let's go ahead and start working our way down into this thing. And then we'll end up making where basically the numbers would go, et cetera, et cetera. And I'll do this by coming over here and grabbing a bevel so that I can do a combination of extrudes and scales at the same time. So, again, you notice I'm doing a lot of this interactively. So I'll simply click, and I want to come down just a little bit. And I'm just determining some thickness here, and I'll scale it inwards. Not a whole lot, maybe right about there. And I'll go ahead and click uh, to complete. Now I'll go ahead and do another one. So I'll bring this one down, maybe not quite so much. And I'll bring this one out. Okay, so I'm, by the way, I'm looking right now up in my front view because I don't want to go out too far because that could end up causing myself some grief. So I'll go back to about right there. And then at this point, if we wanted to go ahead and go down a little bit more and perhaps scale it in just a little. And then we can go ahead and do one more, and we can bring this one up and scale it in just a little bit like such. And I'll go ahead and right-click, and let's see what things are looking like. Uh, we'll go ahead and come back up to the object level, and I will go ahead and hit F4 to turn off edge faces. And this is what we've got at the moment. So now we've got our ring right here, nice little lip. I can kind of deal with that. That's not bad, especially when we turn our uh, iterations up one more a little bit later on. So let's go ahead and move on. Again, the idea is to keep this relatively simple. So we'll go ahead and let's switch back over here into polygon mode, and let's just quickly do something for the bottom down here. I'll go ahead and grab inset, and we'll interactively do this as well. So I'll just kind of uh, let's see, move this in maybe to about right there. And let's go ahead and grab a bevel. So I'll extrude. Let's see, maybe eh, just a little bit and in just a little bit. And then I'll extrude again. And not a whole lot here. And I'll bring this way on down. I don't know, something about right there looks pretty good. So let's go ahead and right click. And again, I'm going to come back up to object level just to see how things are looking. Let's go ahead and hit G so we can see the bottom. You can see we're starting to get a nice little ring going on down there. So, you know. That's not bad. I can kind of live with that. So now what I want to do is go ahead and start making this look a little bit more like a watch. So we'll go ahead and come back into polygon mode. And let's go ahead and pick on this side. And let's just swing on around over here. And control click to pick on this side right here so that we can do both of these at the same time. And Basically, I'm going to need to be doing extrusions and scales right here. And I could use the bevel tool if I wanted to, uh, except for the bevel is going to give me more of the uniform scaling. And I'm going to need to go in there and have not quite so much uniform scaling because what will happen is this thing is going to end up becoming thin really quick. So let's go ahead and let's just start out with a regular extrude. So we'll interactively come out here and extrude it out just a little bit. Uh, like such. And I'll come up here and grab scale, and we'll go ahead and switch scale over into local mode. Okay, so we can kind of get an idea of what's happening here. And I'll come over here and scale it down in Y, and let's scale it down just a little bit in X, but not a lot because you'll see what I'm talking about. It, it doesn't take a lot before we kind of start to get just a little bit too thin right there. So maybe something like that. And if you know, if you want to get really picky about it, we could go in here and kind of start pushing it back up to make it a little bit tighter if we want it to. Uh, before moving, though, of course, I'm also going to switch this over into a local coordinate system as well so that we move both of these guys, as you see here, in the right direction. So, you know, maybe something like maybe that. And then let's come over here. This time we'll just throw a bevel on it. And we'll go ahead and pull it out one more. So, I don't know, maybe something like there. And we'll bring that down. And there you go. So now you can, you know, we're starting to get a little bit more of a, a better shape going on, if you will. And now, of course, at the moment, I haven't set anything up at the end. It's starting to get almost a little bit too thin for my liking. But, again, this is just uh, for quick demonstration purposes, uh, perhaps a little bit of cleanup. If we were to switch up here into this view, switch over into a vertex, let's go ahead and turn off our snaps. We don't want that to cause any problems. And we could... Actually, before even uh, pulling that in or out, let's go ahead and switch back into Polygon real quick. And I'm just going to do a quick inset, okay, just to kind of make the bit of a hard edge right there. So I like the way that looks. 
Let's go ahead and switch back over here into Vertex, and we can grab these guys. And let's see, we'll go ahead and come up here, and let's grab these guys right here, switch over to Scale. And what I want to do is move this back to View, and then we can just kind of scale these to whatever we like. So kind of pull it in about like such down here. It looks like we let's go ahead and undo that and select these guys. looks like we let them know. There we go. And so we can just kind of pull these in a little bit, and then I'll grab these, and we'll move on up here and control select these. And same thing again, just kind of scale these down. Not quite so much. Let me take these back up a little bit. That's the fun in modeling, lots and lots and lots of tweaking. So there we go. It's getting more into the shape that I'm looking for. All right, good deal. All right, so the next thing we'll do, we'll go ahead and come back to this here shortly. Let's go ahead and work something out for our side right here so that we can see how we could basically put a slot in for our little knob that allows us to adjust our timing and all. So to do this, I'm just going to come on down here to the Edit Geometry Rollout and grab Cut. Let's just swing this around right here so that I can see what's going on. And I will select right about the middle right here. And then I'm just going to move over here, kind of keep it about centered so that we get an even distribution with our geometry so we don't get any pinching or any uh, real flat edges. So right about there looks good. So I'll go ahead and click, and then I'll right click. So I'm done with that. So we'll go ahead and switch, just so I'm adjusting my view so I can see a little bit better. So we'll start right here with another click. And again, I'll drag out over here, just kind of being careful to kind of keep things somewhat centered up. We'll go ahead and click, right click. And it's made a little bit of an adjustment to this right here. You can see it's made it a little bit fatter, which we could come in here and you know start moving it in if we need to. But the whole idea of this is if I wanted to now go ahead and right click to cancel the cut tool, I could select this vertex, go ahead and switch back over to move, that's good, and let's go ahead and put this back into view. Now I can come up here, up under edit vertices rollout, and click chamfer. And let's go ahead and open this up. I don't want to keep them too close together because what will happen is we're going to end up with a lot of geometry bunched up right there, and we want to avoid pinching. And you can see up here that these guys are not going to make up a planar polygon, so we could go ahead and maybe up that amount just a little bit. So let's go ahead and say OK. And let's go ahead and make this planar so we could scroll down to the Edit Geometry Rollout, click Make Planar. OK, so that's going to kind of clean up the distribution a little bit. So we've got a little bit of a hump going on right there. So I mean, we could come in here and if we wanted to, just kind of grab all this. You can see we can pull it out, or we can just kind of start pushing it back in, like such. So that's not quite as pronounced now. And then we can just simply come on up here and switch over into polygon mode and just grab that polygon right there. And with this, we'll start out with doing a simple inset. So I'll interactively do it. Just pull it in just a little bit. So right about up, oh, close, close. Computer's uh, giving me a little bit of slow uh, reaction right here because of all the recording that's going on. So that's pretty good. So now let's go ahead and do an extrusion. So I'll click, and I'll extrude this negatively. So we'll just go back just a little ways to right about there. And you'll notice that with the geometry, it's starting to look a little awkward right there and a little awkward up on the bottom. And we'll be able to adjust the weights on our vertices in a few minutes to kind of help flush that out a little bit. So now what we can do is we could come in here and I'm going to open up my settings dialog here for inset and we'll inset it just I mean just a little bit so maybe a little bit more and we'll go ahead and tell it okay and come back in here and do an extrude and I'm going to do the extrude with having my settings box open so I'll go ahead and right click to zero that and now let's make it come on out here so it's coming and here we go so I don't want it to go out really far just it's not so much of where the actual, where you're seeing the red highlighted right now. It's more of where the actual geometry is. So, excuse me. So that looks pretty decent. So let's go ahead and we can just simply apply it. And then we can right click to zero out this one. And then we can go ahead and OK that. And then let's go ahead and come over here for bevel. And I'll tell it no height, so I'll right click on it. And let's go ahead and right click on our outline amount and we will go positive with it so let's go ahead and come over here to get an idea of about how big we're making our little knob we don't want to go too crazy uh, maybe something like that's not too bad so we can go ahead and tell it to apply and then we can adjust the height and here it comes 
So let's go ahead and move this over a little bit. And of course, I don't want no outline on this. So maybe somewhere right about there. So we'll go ahead and apply that. And let's zero this out right here. And at this point, if we wanted to add just you know a really small amount, just to give a little bit of rounding off at the very end, there'd be nothing wrong with that. So we'll go ahead and tell it OK. And let's see how things are starting to look. So we'll go ahead and come back up to the actual object level. And this is how it's looking. All right, so just again, it's just to give you an idea of how we'd cut a knob and do things like that. But I want to go ahead and, and try to fix some of this flattening that we've got right there because it looks, you know, a little awkward. So to do that, let's go ahead and come into oops, vertex mode there and deselect them. And I'm just going to kind of cruise in here, grab this guy right here, where we could move them around. But to pull some of this volume back out, I'll just select them. And as, you know, as opposed to moving them, I'm just going to come down here up under the Edit Vertices Rollout down to Weight. Start adjusting my weight, and you can see that that's going to start redistributing these edges a little bit, basically the weighting of them, if you will, so that I can put some of the volume back in. So that's looking a lot better right there. Now the bottom, of course, is also looking pretty sad, so I'll just click this guy right here. And same thing, I'll just come over here to Weight and start putting a little bit of weight in it. And now we're starting to pull, there we go, maybe a little bit more. Oh, not quite so much. All right, so now if we come all the way back down to the bottom here, up under subdivision surfaces, roll out again. Let's take our iterations up to three and come up here and go back into object mode, and we'll just deselect it. So this is how it's kind of starting to shape up. So next thing we could do, it's not, it's not the most attractive watch in the world. Next thing we could do is go ahead and come in here, and just so that we can manipulate this easily, I'm going to come back down here and take my iterations back down one. Let's go ahead and put a, uh, I don't know, we could put a bin modifier. We could put a freeform deformation modifier on it. Let's just put a bin. That will be nice, quick, and easy. So I'll come up here to the modifier list. We'll drop this down, and let's come down. There it is. Throw a bin on it. And let's see, we're going to be bending around the x-axis, and this is going to be wrong. Yep, not a problem, though. All we need to do, we'll just come up here into our top viewport, is expand bend. Come down here to the gizmo. I'm going to turn on angle snap, grab my rotate tool, and let's just take this guy and rotate him 90 degrees. And so that looks good right there. And we go ahead and turn angle snap off and go back up here to bend, and maybe don't bend it quite as much. I don't know, something like that. So, you know, hopefully you'll start to get the idea of basically how to generate real simple shape from this. So this is, you know, it's a little something, you know, it's not the world's greatest thing, but it's keeping a relatively clean mesh, and, um, and it's a, at least applying some of the things that we've been taking a look at. So that's going to conclude modeling this little guy right here. Thanks.